yeah, I'm not, I would not say, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I would, the way I define myself is a lover of academia and not an academic. I'm not a particularly, I'm not necessarily the go-to source, but I, um, I love it. Well, when, in my undergrad, I was trying to order my pieces in a larger sense, like in an uber sense. And so when I was making that trilogy, uh, I had start. I didn't start making that trilogy with the intention of making a trilogy. When I started um, Pygmalion, it came out of a conversation with the choreographer, and the choreographer. I, I said, "I want to do something from the classical world. What do you think? What should we do?" And I pitched her a couple of different ideas, and she wanted to do Pygmalion because it was the story that she knew. And I thought, "Well, this is interesting because Pygmalion, in a lot of ways, is the myth of the artist, you know, and also the." Um, love and transformation and when I when it was successful and we thought well what are we going to do next I started thinking about what might be a larger order and just looked into Ovid's Metamorphosis for w the title essentially like what what does it mean to change how do these characters change you know um, and so I was taking a graduate level um, class in mythology with a, a wonderful lady. I'm, she's sort of like the sort of um, Eastern European, like old master, and uh, with a whole bunch of graduate students. We were talking about a, you know, a variety of different like myth criticism and theory and things like that. And I stumbled along um, Hermaphrod a, 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 like an article on JSTOR about hermaphroditis and what it might mean. And I thought, ah, this is the next thing to write about. And so sometimes, a lot of the time, the art orders itself. The art tells you what it needs to do. So eventually, Ovid, it sort of laid itself out that I was going to do three pieces based on love and transformation within Ovid's Metamorphosis. So Pygmalion to Hermaphroditus to Narcissus, and what is it? What? What? How are those different types? How? How is the love that an artist bears for his or her creation different than, you know, the lust that? Uh, Salmachus feels when she's looking at Hermaphroditus in the forest and saying, I want that, and then throwing herself onto him and falling into a pool and begging the gods for them never to be separated, only to be transformed into the same being. Like, what on earth? I mean, we know that part of that story is an etymological myth about this certain fountain that had effeminizing, quote unquote, powers. You know, so that's part of what drove that story. But at the same time, there is a human need or a human fascination with lust. Um, and then in Narcissus, it's of course about self-love. And what we did in the orchestration of Narcissus is we started with a full chorus. We broke it up into three sections because we did it like a mini opera. Since Narcissus, or since um, ancient Roman pantomime, uh, was actually what the old masters of opera were trying to recreate when they or created opera to begin with. They thought they were creating ancient Roman pantomime. So we were trying to do a little homage to them and broke it up into three sections. And we had uh, Liriope, which is Narcissus's mother. And then we had Echo in the second section, which is, of course, Narcissus's love interest. And it was interesting to see how Echo compared to Salmachus um, as two nymphs that both lust after a young man. And, um, and then Narcissus himself. So these three sections, it's like the love that a mother bears for a child, the love of a lover, and then self-love. And in each concentric circle, as the story got smaller, the instrumentation gets smaller, until at the end of Narcissus, it's just Narcissus and the soloist, um, who's playing Narcissus vocally, singing together in this sort of like strange duet. Um, so, I mean, artists are interested in love, and that's, and, and how love changes us. And Ovid knew that well before any of us. And I could go back, I could live in that world forever. I could make art from nothing else but the metamorphosis and, and find real meaning that you might find interesting and compelling in it. That's, that's incredible. As opposed to you know, going to see a movie that you're like, you've sat through two and a half hours and you feel like nothing, you got nothing out of it. You know?